Welcome to episode 42 of Fresh Thinking. My name is Taryn Elkington, General Manager for Snowden Optero. It's my first day in the hosting chair, so please go easy on me in the comments. Our usual host, Justin Tracy, will be back with us in future episodes. Today is part one of a two-part series on a topic which I think has significant potential for economic and environmental gains for mining companies. Uh, and that, that is in-pit crushing and conveying, or IPCC. In this episode, we'll talk generally about IPCC and its applications and benefits. And in part two, we'll dive a little bit more into the technical detail. Joining me to talk about uh, IPCC today is a, a world IPCC expert, <laughs> Phil, Phil Morris. Uh, 49 years of experience, although you wouldn't uh, know it by looking at him, uh, in operations, contracting, and consulting with uh, the last 20 or so years uh, really focusing on IPCC and uh, trying to make it work for the industry. So Phil, it's great to, to have you here today. Thank you. for. And, uh, and uh, maybe you could start by telling us a little bit what is what actually is IPCC. Okay. Um, hi there, everybody. The first thing we need to clear up is uh, half the world thinks that IPCC means International Protocol for climate change and uh, there is another IPCC which is the in-pit crushing and conveying and what in-pit crushing and conveying is, uh, is a method of bulk mining, uh, handling of materials by means other than trucks and uh, just as in all mines, all mines have crushers and conveyors and a plant processing them or some means of, of getting rid of the material at the end of the conveyor. In-pit crushing uses all of it, exactly the same systems, but the idea and the concept of it is to bring all of those, uh, the operation into the pit if possible, or as close to the pit rather than at the plant. Uh, also, we can move waste as well as ore and uh, I think in broad brush terms, that's what in-pit crushing is. It's a replacement for uh, the use of, of trucks in a mining operation. And through replacing those trucks uh, from the operation, what are the sort of benefits that you might see out of, uh, out of implementing IPCC into a mining project? Well, obviously the, the, the primary objective is to cut operating costs. So. Uh, how, how are you achieving that? Um, in a normal trucking operation, uh, a, a truck that carries, let's say 400 tonnes of material, typically weighs almost as much as the material it's carrying, if not more. So the energy that's being used through use of a diesel motor or electric motor is uh, around 50% effective. Half of the weight is dead. In a conveying system, uh, something like 15% uh, of the weight is dead and the other 85% is what we call live load or effective load. So automatically what you can understand is that, that in-pit crushing and conveying is less energy intensive than trucking. And so uh, it should produce lower unit operating costs if you're able to install the conveyors and get the material away from your mine. So that's the first thing you're going to save. The second thing you're looking to save in the long term is uh, the capital cost and it's capital cost of rebuilds and replacements of the, the truck fleet, which is a very big number for most mines, particularly uh, uh, mines that are moving a lot of material. So in pit crushing automatically, we tend to associate with, with mines that have higher material movement rates. Um, and last but not least, there's an opportunity um, to reduce your carbon footprint, the uh, greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide. Every kilogram, sorry, yes, every, every litre of fuel uh, generates 2.6 kilograms of, of carbon dioxide. So if whatever source you use to produce the power to drive in-pit crushing um, is more energy efficient than that engine that's driving the truck, you will lower your, your carbon footprint. So 
three things, operating cost savings, capital cost savings, which is offset by the, obviously the capital cost of the IPCC itself, and lastly, the, the carbon footprint reduction. So. And when you talk about the, the economic um, benefits or the unit cost benefits, what, what's the, in your experience, the range of those unit cost savings that a, a project may, may see? Um, they're, they're fairly dramatic. I mean, I think, uh, I think I've been involved with 38 or 39 impact crushing studies and one of them didn't make any money. So that's one out of 39. The other 39 were all uh, cash flow positive for impact crushing. But the range might be as little as uh, 10 to 15 cents a tonne. And I think the largest number I've ever come across was in excess of a, a dollar US per tonne saving in operating costs. So it can be fairly dramatic, but typically it's of the order of 20 to 30 percent of your mine operating costs might be a, a, a target number that you could expect to save. And so that's a pretty significant number when you multiply that out by the number of tons you might lose in, in a year? Certainly, but um, I mean the thing to remember is that um, it depends whether we're retrofitting or, or putting into a new operation, but you're not, you, you've either got to get rid of the trucks that you've already got, and the best time to have IPCC is obviously right at the start, because then you're replacing the purchase cost of, of your entire truck fleet with the purchase cost of your impact crushing infrastructure. And that tends to end up being relatively cash neutral over the life of a project. If you have to retrofit impact crushing, you've got a, a, a significant capital outlay at the start of the uh, implementation phase that you've then got to recover. So that, that sort of tends to be a balancer, if you like, in terms of when it's going to make you, give you the best benefit. And when you talk about the environmental uh, or the carbon emissions savings, is, does that require, um, do, do you get those savings regardless of whether you're using renewable energy or, or grid power or, you know, <laughs> Unfortunately not, no. The, the key here is um, if, if you were, for example, running off a uh, brown coal fire st power station, um, your carbon emissions would probably be greater for the power that's going into impact crushing than they would be for your diesel for the trucks. That's how significant that is. At the other end of the scale, if you're fortunate enough to have an operation where you've got access to hydro power, which is essentially completely clean uh, energy, then you've got a, you, you get a 100% offset against all of the diesel that you would be consuming in the mine operation. And that can amount for a, a medium sized uh, operation, you know, it might be as much as 100,000 tonnes a year or more of, of carbon offset, but it is, unfortunately a balance between the source of the power and uh, therefore how much carbon is generated in, in generating the power that you're going to use. Okay and so I guess um, tying into that, to that, um, that topic there's a bunch of drivers which mean that IPCC uh, may or may not be useful for a mining operation. Can you run us through some of those uh, those things that work in the favour of um, getting the, the best possible benefit out of IPCC? Yeah, I, might, I, I guess there's, there might be as many as 10 key drivers, but um, obviously on, on the first thing you're looking for is uh, longevity uh, or the, the life of, of the operation that uh, you're considering because uh, the impact crushing capital takes you know, three, four, five years to repay. So you're looking for something seven, eight years or longer mine life to uh, allow you to get payback for your capital expenditure. Um, then you're looking for uh, mines that have a, a, a relatively high strip ratio, for example, because um, most of the money that's spent in mining is actually in, in waste removal, not in ore transport. And so uh, I think in the past people thought of impact crushing as being something that would just replace the, the ore crusher. 
uh, but they're nowadays the bulk of the studies that, that I've been involved with or that we're seeing, um, they are actually trying to process waste. The opportunity with it is that um, we don't need to crush the waste anywhere near as fine as the ore. And so we can have uh, a crusher that can get an enormous throughput. The negative side of that is that, that it's all dead money. Crushing of waste is dead money. And so you're, you're, you've got to recover that. So longevity, we've talked about strip ratio. Uh, one of the other things is um, rock strength. Typically, uh, the harder the rock, the more money you're going to need to spend on, on crushing it. So unless it's an ore impact crushing system, particularly for waste, it's very helpful if your waste is medium strength. Let's, let's say under 100 megapascal for uh, unconfined compressive strength would be a good number. Um, another key driver is the ratio of your power cost in, in uh, cents per kilowatt hour versus what you're paying for your diesel in, in uh, dollars per litre. So let's say your power cost is um, 20 cents a kilowatt hour and your diesel cost is 80 cents a litre. That gives you a four, what we call a four to one ratio. Something of that sort of an order is likely to be giving you a positive result. So that's a, a, a number that you automatically look for is that ratio and that helps to tell you if, you're, if you think you've got a chance of success. Um, long hauls uh, is another obvious uh, benefit for in-pit crushing. Uh, typically, if your cycle times are, say, less than 10 to 15 minutes in uh, one way from, from the pit face all the way out of the pit and to wherever the material's got to go, you'll struggle more to um, make in-pit crushing work. But if you've got 25, 30 minute hauls out to a waste dump that's growing with time, which is typical in, in a lot of large mining operations, that will lend itself quite comfortably because the capital cost of an extra kilometre of conveyor is minimal. The power consumption for running an extra kilometre of conveyor is minimal. Uh, but the, the amount of fuel that you would burn to carry that extra kilometre would be quite significant in a truck. So the longer the hauls, the greater the benefit for IPCC. I'm sure I've forgotten a couple. <laughs> yeah, um, but I think they're, they're, they're all uh, key drivers that, that you can look for. Um, I think one more that we perhaps should mention is uh, if you've got complexity of material management, uh, you, you don't, if you've got to perhaps contain material that's net acid generating in a donut or something like that in a waste dump and you, you're constrained in how you mine so that you can build that dump without it being a complex operation. You're looking for simplicity in the way that you form dumps. Um, so anytime we're not talking about ore, you are looking for um, not more than perhaps three maximum types of waste material that you've got to manage because it gets, gets, just gets messy. And, and the last thing I'd like to mention is pit design and uh, the complexity or, or the need for simplification in some respects to incorporate in pit crushing. If you do want to bring IPCC into a pit rather than having it external to the pit. Uh, you've got to be very cognizant of what the ramifications of that are in terms of your uh, pit design, the phases, the stage designs and the long-term scheduling of the mine. So it's not, that's, that's a, a much, that's a complex area that one. <laughs> I think we might touch on that a bit more in, uh, in part two of, okay. the, of this, uh, this podcast, but I think that's good. Definitely a good, good range of, um, of, uh, of factors involved. Um, is there anything that particularly stands against, um, you know, obviously working in, on the negative of each of those, but is there anything else that stands out that may go against IPCC? Um, it's, it, that, that's an interesting question, but I, I think the biggest uh, thing that, that tends to be a stumbling block for IPCC, there are two things. One is the cyclical nature of oil prices, which in the past 
there were a lot of studies being done up to around 2010. Uh, the oil price went over $100 a barrel. Then the oil price crashed. And uh, for the last five, eight years even, uh, since perhaps 2013, there's been very few studies or very little intent to look at IPCC. And of course, with the resurgence of oil prices now, um, a lot of those studies are being dusted off and brought back on the table. But the other single biggest issue is what I call uh, accepting a, a change in paradigm about the way you, you operate, because historically, crushers and conveyors belong to the plant. We always, uh, the mine mines the dirt, takes it out, puts it on a stockpile, and that's the end of it, you know, and they're very happy that the plant manages the operation of downstream. If you're gonna go in pit crushing, the mine has to have ownership of the crushing and conveying operation, particularly if it's waste. Um, and and uh, they've got to deal with the, the disposal of the waste and the building of the waste dumps. That's going to require a, a, what I call a paradigm shift because you're going to have to have people in the mining operation who are managing a plant style of, uh, of operations. So that's probably the biggest, the, the, the two major items that you, you need to be careful of or be aware of because management doesn't always have great enthusiasm for change. And, and I guess uh, leading on from that is how, I mean, that, that's sort of how people have perceived IPCC in the past and how, how would you see the future for IPCC and its application to the, to the industry? That's, that's a very difficult question to answer in some respects because of all the studies that I've been involved with, I think only three of them have progressed to a full feasibility or are now in operation. I guess the, the, the one that I know is in operation full time uh, was, was Vale, the S11D property in Brazil. And uh, it's not without its challenges. And where do I see it going? I think that whilst uh, oil prices remain high and the need for mining companies to reduce their carbon footprint is definitely very high because there's pressure to be carbon neutral within the next probably 10 to 15 years. IPCC is one of the key opportunities to drive a mine towards becoming carbon neutral. And uh, for that reason alone, I think that the, the amount of studies will stay high. Implementation, I think it's, it's got to increase. I mean, we should remember that there are over 500 impact crushing and conveying operations worldwide. It's not, it's not new technology. It's been around for a long time. Uh, I think the first mine that ever installed it was, uh, was in Canada in, was it 1970, 72, something like that. It was, it was over 50 years ago now. Um, so that's pretty amazing that we've had this technology around for 50 years, but we're reinventing it, if you get me, um, probably making it a little better this time round. But yes, there's opportunity. Uh, yes, there will be a need from an economic point of view, but I think carbon is probably the single most, the, the greatest driver that we're going to see over the next few years. Well, it sure sounds like something that uh, can save uh, carbon emissions in these times, along with the economic benefits, is definitely something that's going to be uh, interesting for the, the industry to look at a lot more going, going forward. Uh, we're going to leave this podcast uh, right here. So um, thank you very much for your, for your insights, Phil. It's been fantastic. In the next podcast, we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the technical details associated with IPCC. So please tune in to that, uh, to that podcast. Um, this, uh, this has been Fresh Thinking by Snowden Optiro. Uh, thanks, thanks for joining us. Uh, this, is, this podcast will be available wherever you get your podcasts. It will be also available on YouTube at some point, so please look at the show notes. Thanks for joining us and we look forward to speaking to you.